Hey there, some of you might remember when I reviewed every single synth in Arturia's V6 collection in a painfully 45 minute long video. And that video actually got taken down for a bit because for a brief moment while talking about the DX7's use in pop music, I showed a clip of a Laura Branigan video and they shut that shit down. Anyway, the video is back up with the aforementioned part removed and I will link to it down there on my nips and in the description. Anyway, you are most likely watching the first Arturia V8 collection review. When the V7 collection came out, I didn't do a review. I was over there botting in the Korean War. So we're gonna be going over some of the new stuff in the V8 collection. And then we're also gonna go back and look at some of the new stuff that I missed in the V7 collection. So I do own an Arturia Keylab Make 2, which is my primary controller at my desk. However, for this video, we're gonna be using this little $130 cutie. I have acquired this thing for a future video where I will be comparing it to a product from a company with deeply rooted, steadfast garbage ethics. The company's name begins with a B, it ends with an Erringer. So my last video on this channel was actually my top five music software programs of 2020. And unfortunately, Arturia hadn't announced the V8 collection yet, although I was still already testing this out. So I hereby nominate the Arturia OBXA plugin, which is in this V8 collection as I guess a runner up because it absolutely would have made it on that top five list. And I guess let's start there. OBXA is modeled after, wait for it, Oberheim's OBXA. Now, what if I told you that you could have a VST version of the synthesizer used in Van Halen's Jump? Yeah, I'd probably not care either, but the XA is probably one of the biggest sounding synths that I know of, and it's a shame that its most notorious use is in that one phrase. So far, out of the growing library of synths here, this one is tied as my favorite with the CS80. While I have no idea how accurate they are, since I'll likely never be lucky enough to touch half of this stuff in real life, I do know this. They both simply sound enormous and outstanding. The Emu Emulator 2 cost a petty $30,000, and it was pretty much the go-to machine of every recording studio that could afford one. I could go down a massive incomplete list of recognizable names that use this, but you could probably just look at the Billboard pop charts from 1984 to 1990, and it would probably be identical. You could probably hear it flexed the best in John Carpenter film scores, or when Ferris Bueller used one to trick his idiot parents. If you don't know any of these references, then how about this? If Vaporwave had a heart, it's an emulator too. Vocoder is a vocoder, believe it or not. It's modeled after the Bode 7702, which was later licensed and rebranded by Bob Moog. For something that was made in the late 70s, it's incredibly crafty with a patch bay for synthesizer inputs and analyzer outputs, and things that are surprisingly useful, like sample and hold. What it does do is quite easily make your voice vocoded without making your words unrecognizable. And from those of us from the early 2000s who missed the orange vocoder VST, this might actually be a quality replacement. Oh, 
And of course, if you were wondering, you could just pass your voice or really any input in here live and go to town. This is really great because there's a shortage of vocoder VSTs that sound good. There are quite a few other new things in the V8 updates, such as Stage 73 and Jupiter 8 updates, a new sound browsing interface, loads of new presets, and a new version of Analog Lab. Most notably, there are in-app tutorials for all of these synths that really do a useful and intuitive job of helping you understand how the synth works. CZV is the Casio CZ101. It uses phase distortion synthesis, which in my opinion is very underused and underrated. Casio was innovating with this, and Yamaha was working with FM. Each have their own very specific pros and cons, but it seems like FM survived history a whole lot better. Phase distortion sounds very brassy, in a good way, and in an effects chain it can make some really unique and beautiful pads. While the synth looks simple and almost like a toy, don't for a second think that it isn't capable of sounding absolutely huge. The EMS Synthi is a portable modular synthesizer most classically known for this. I know you've heard this on every synth plugin, but Pink Floyd actually used a Synthi for On The Run. More meaningful to me, this was used for the lead synth solo on any color you like. Anyway, I could spend a really long time playing with this, and for that I'm actually really thankful that I don't have the real thing. I would never finish another video. I really love the matrix in the middle here, and I've always wanted to build a big one on the ceiling for my whole studio. Just do away with all the wires. V7 also comes with a Mellotron. There are a few different Mellotron VSTs, but most of the others sound quite a bit off or are very old or buggy. Now if you use a Mellotron sound semi-frequently or more, this is the obvious plugin you'll want. It's very good for a decayed Boards of Canada vibe as well as a classic Beatles-like indie score. For those of you unfamiliar with the Mellotron, it's kind of like a blend between a synthesizer and a tape machine, and it speeds up or slows down the tape to pitch. It's a pretty fascinating instrument, definitely worth a read. All right, so what do you think? This isn't a paid review. I actually use the Arturia V collection quite frequently. I think that these plugins run really efficiently and sound unique. They also work flawlessly with hardware like the Keylab. All of the synths mentioned here run as standalone applications or plugins. And I think that maybe the only downside to the V collection is the price. $599 is a lot to ask. I don't know, maybe it isn't. It's 28 cents, so that's just barely over $20 a synth. But still, $600 is a lot of money. Every now and then you can catch Arturia having site-wide software sales. They may even have one now for the launch of this, sometimes up to 50% off. So if 600 bucks is too much for you, maybe have a look out for that. I personally think that it is worth the price for these reasons. The first being, 
Unlike a lot of other software companies, Arturia actually reaches out to the creators of the original vintage synthesizers and either collaborates with them or just simply gets the green light for this. Arturia also, unlike a lot of other software companies, doesn't just slap some generic oscillators and filters into a familiar GUI and say, oh, here's a new Jupyter emulation. They really do dig in with lower level programming to get things to sound and function properly and efficiently. And I've been using a beta of this for quite a while and I have yet to run into anything resembling a bug. Arturia also dishes out updates like it's yesterday's news and the Arturia Software Center app. There's always some new tweaks or new features or new presets available. All in all, if you get this collection, something like a key lab, maybe Arturia Spark for drums, you're still under $1,000 for what could conceivably be a complete synth music setup. And I suppose that's pretty fair. Of course, if you only want one of these synths, you can also buy them individually too. And I suppose that's it. If you learned anything or if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. If there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. If you want to see what I'm up to on a more frequent basis, you can follow me on social media. And if you want to support this channel or get over 30 hours of my music, you can do so on Bandcamp. The links for all these things are right down there below. Oh, and one last thing. Thank you to Blackmagic Design for sending me their new speed editor. I'm actually really excited to take this footage into Resolve and edit it in hopefully like half the time it usually takes, thus saving me a whole bunch of times so I could do other things that I enjoy. Okay, bye.